So imagine scrolling through headlines and you see this. Radioactive shrimp at Walmart in 2025. Yeah. I mean, you almost have to do double take, right? We're talking Walmart's own great value brand. And just the sheer absurdity of uh, potentially radioactive food hitting shelves. Okay, let's unpack that. Exactly. It's a pretty wild story, isn't it? Today, we're really going to dig into how this whole shrimp saga unfolded and, you know, the science behind the cesium-137 stuff, plus what it tells us about, well, the bigger picture of radioactive food concerns and maybe surprisingly how Walmart's own history with recalls kind of fits in. There's this weird mix of, like, actual hazard, perceived risk, and, yeah, maybe even a bit of dark comedy. Right. Let's jump right into the bizarre event itself then. August 2025, the FDA puts out a warning about great value, raw frozen shrimp, sold at Walmart, obviously, and the first red flag, this cesium-137, it, it was actually detected in the shipping containers from Indonesia. Uh, uh-huh, from BMS Foods, found at four different U.S. ports. And here's where it gets interesting, the nuance of it all. So one specific sample, it was breaded shrimp, did test positive for cesium-137. But, and this is key, the FDA was really clear, no shrimp that actually tested positive had entered the U.S. food supply. Wait, so... The recall wasn't for shrimp-confirmed radioactive. Exactly. It was proactive. For products shipped after those containers tested positive, it didn't matter if the shrimp inside the specific later bags tested positive or not. Walmart moved fast, offered full refunds, you know, listed the lot codes, 13 states involved. And that's where the, like... Almost comedy comes in, isn't it? Walmart, Mr. Great Value himself, recalling radioactive shrimp. That might not be radioactive. The FDA's reason was amazing. Prepared, packed, or held under in sanitary conditions whereby it may have become contaminated. And it did, yeah. Yeah, a parody. It really is. And it uh, it highlights a critical point. The amount of cesium-137 found was low. It wasn't going to cause acute radiation sickness, you know, immediate problems. But the warning was precautionary to reduce exposure to low-level radiation. The kind that could maybe add up over time, increase long-term health risks like cancer. So the real drama wasn't immediate danger, but, you know, public perception Mm. and the huge disruption. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But this stuff, cesium-137, what is it exactly? Right. So cesium-137, it's a radioactive isotope. Think of it as a byproduct. comes from nuclear fission. It's basically splitting atoms, like in a nuclear reactor or, uh, unfortunately, atomic bombs. It has a pretty long half-life, about 30 years, so it sticks around. And it's highly water-soluble. That means it spreads easily in the environment, especially water. Think Chernobyl, Fukushima. Wow. And get this, something I found out, it's not just a hazard. They actually use cesium-137 in radiation therapy. And even weirder, to date wine and check sediment age after 1945. That's versatile. It is, yeah. It's strange how these things work. In the body, biologically, it acts a bit like potassium, so it gets distributed through your soft tissues. The good news, generally, is that it's excreted pretty quickly. Biological half-life is around 70 days for most people, but there is some research showing it can concentrate in certain organs, like the pancreas, and in some studies, that's been linked to uh, higher cancer rates. Okay, so this shrimp thing feels so specific, almost absurd. But is radioactive food like a bigger global issue than we think? How does this fit in? Yeah, that's a great question. If you connect the dots, it definitely echoes the aftermath of Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. Remember that? Huge releases of radioactive materials, including cesium-137, into the ocean. And yeah, subsequent contamination found in Japanese food. We saw things like beef with cesium levels way over their safety limits, fish samples, thousands of times higher than allowed. And then in 2023, Japan started releasing the treated wastewater from Fukushima. That sparked this huge ongoing debate, you know? Will the ocean dilute it enough? Or will it bioaccumulate, build up in the food chain? Right, concentrating in the fish we eat. Exactly. Professor Bob Richman had that great line, the ocean is not a sterile aquarium. Ah. And it also makes you look at uh, standards. Turns out U.S. safety limits for cesium in food are actually weaker than Japan's own limits. Huh. And bringing you back to Walmart, Mm -hmm. this isn't exactly their first big recall controversy, is it? Reminds me of that 2025 Ozark Trail water bottle thing. Mm -hmm. The lids could just forcefully eject, cause injuries, even partial blindness in one case. And it came out. Walmart knew about the hazard way back in 2018. Right. It's not just a one-off incident, is it? There's a sort of pattern, maybe. It highlights how these huge companies like Walmart navigate that tricky space between, well, public perception, actual risk, and their bottom line. Sometimes maybe market stability seems more important than uh, immediate fully transparent action, both the water bottles and the shrimp kind of show these layers of corporate response from knowing there's a problem to eventually acting, sometimes with delays. Wow, what a ride. From this frankly bizarre headline to some pretty complex science, 
global concerns, and yeah, corporate patterns. This whole deep dive really shows that even if the direct danger seems low, like with the shrimp, the ripple effects, mm -hmm. perceived contamination, corporate responsibility, consumer trust, that they can be massive, absolutely huge. Yeah, it really makes you wonder, doesn't it? In this world now, so interconnected, information and potential contaminants, they spread so fast. How do we actually define safe enough? And what responsibility do we have you know, as consumers to stay informed about what's actually on our plates?